Welcome to In the Spotlight. Um, I'm excited today to be talking to Britta Glaser, who is an artist across several different fields. Britta and I met back in 2020, and since then I've been following her career, both as a singer and a painter and as an entrepreneur um, over these last couple of years. So Britta, welcome. It's wonderful to see you. Thank you, Jenny. It's lovely to see you. <laughs> so today um, we're going to talk a little bit about the year that's been and what's new for Britta. But before we start, I just want to do a little bit of a bio so you know something about Britta. Um, Britta was born in Munich in Germany. She has a degree in fine arts. And then she started studying singing in Leipzig, in London and Vienna. Um, starting as a mezzo soprano and then moving to soprano, uh, the soprano voice range. Uh, she then studied privately in Florence and Rome. Britta now works as a freelance soprano. Um, she's sung in numerous theatres and concert venues in Europe. Her most recent roles include Tosca, Traviata, Tatiana, and Donna Elvira. Britta is also an entrepreneur. Um, she founded her own opera company in 2018, the Compagnia Nova. So she has a versatile artistic life between performing and producing and painting. And I'm right to say that that painting behind you is one of yours, no, Britta? Yes, that's right. <laughs> so amazing. So, um, Welcome, Britta, and I'm really excited to talk to you about, about everything that's going on for you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Looking <laughs> so starting with this year, we're here we are in December 2022. Um, I have to say for me, it's been a funny old year, not quite what I expected. How about you? What has been the most, what you found most challenging about 2022, and also what's been most successful for you? Ha, huh, good question. Um, to be honest, I think it didn't kind of quite go the way I thought it was going to go. <laughs> um, I was, I was kind of naively hoping that the pandemic would always, almost not be felt anymore around this time, uh, uh this year. But I think the challenge was that we are still really, really struggling in the performing business to kind of find a new normal, to get back into a certain routine, to have a certain reliability again. Mm. Um, and that is something I really, you know, found very difficult both, both as a singer and as a producer. But on the other, other hand, I have to say, I'm, I'm actually quite proud of myself of how I handle things. And I think I've now, I'm now coming out the other end and kind of, I, I feel like I've got, you know, everything ready to thrive even more in 23. Mm, um, and uh, also I, I've been quite pleased that I I was able to balance my versatility as a singer and producer and painter mm. rather well, I would say. <laughs> yeah, and that it's can't like be um, easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Managing your time and presuming... Yes finances yes. and all the rest of it yeah it was it was mainly time management and not kind of getting lost in in small things too much and I think mm -hmm. I feel like I'm on, on track with all the different you know tracks right now <laughs> yeah. nice 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 now I have to ask you because I'm so um curious what was the inspiration or the impetus behind uh, creating your own opera company? Because I don't think many singers do that. That's all, you know, it, that's a whole other thing, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess it's quite unusual. Um, mm. I, by the way, I've always been a founder kind of person. Even when I was 21, I founded a 100-piece symphony orchestra, which is now thriving and no one even knows my name anymore. So that's uh, that's always some, been something that just you know that i just enjoy bringing people together and making them do something that is kind of radiant and beautiful mm -hmm. and um and for the company um around 2018 i had been working in the opera business for quite some time 
I was able to see and analyze what was what was kind of structurally going well and helping the artistic outcome, mm. what was helping to bring in audiences, what wasn't helping to speak to the audiences, um, and also what was helping the artists, you know, do their best work and what wasn't. <laughs> um, and I just really, at that point, wanted to create a new artistic home for myself and for the people around me that I trusted. Mm -hmm. um, uh, where we can thrive artistically and as people and where the entire focus lies on creating the best possible work of art together, wow. which means I also kind of had to, uh, you know, we had to develop a very new kind of collaboration and constructive collaboration with a kind working environment um, that we didn't really find in, in the big opera houses for the most part, to be honest, even though they have so many other advantages. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. And yeah, I must say, I've talked to a lot of singers and I think kindness and this kind of, yeah, being able to connect on a more human, maybe, level. Yes, human is the and, word. We're humans. Yeah. yeah. And we're professionals and we need to be, you know, understanding of each other and need to be focused on our professional work outcome yeah and that's what I try to do with the oh, company that's amazing I I love that yeah so um I'll ask you in a second you know what what performances and things you've got coming up and and then and I know you have some other plans for the company but you know before we go there I'm I know I mean obviously my work is all about inner work and the value of um going inside and clearing up what 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 we have in the way you know as you're talking I'm thinking oh wow you have to be in a really special kind of person to start this kind of business I mean in what way has inner work maybe EFT or maybe other modalities helped you on this journey oh like in every way <laughs> I mean I, I'm just I, I'm I, I'm just entirely pro doing your inner work and taking care of your body and your mind and your soul and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I think especially in Western societies that can easily be kind of looked down upon, frowned upon a little bit too much. Um, and kind of admitting that humans have weaknesses is kind of already too much. But you know, we all have fears. We constantly deal with our fears on a daily basis. Everyone has fears. Um, and as a performer and entrepreneur, of course, I mean, also coming like from a family that is not in that field professionally, my parents are doctors, so they couldn't really give me any advice on how to create a living, uh, like, a, you know, a career oh, in that yeah. mm -hmm. uh, performance uh, space. Um, and as that kind of person, I'm, of course, you know, dealing with probably even more fears than other people who have a safe you know, uh, job position and, you know, nine to five job and, and know what, you know, what comes next. And I'm just trying to be constructive with it. And I think tapping, I started that way before I knew you um, to deal with um, you audition know, people creation. Too, huh? You mean other people do it too? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. No, no, no. <laughs> um, no but... Um, I mean, I've known the positive effects of tapping a long time ago. And so I'm just very pleased to be tapping with you again because it's easy, it's straightforward, and it works and it helps you just, you know, get rid of your fears. Yeah. And like I said, we all actually should be dealing with our fears. Mm. I love it. <laughs> so now, what's next for you in 2023 in the sense of where can we hear you sing where can we see your company what about your paintings tell me a bit about the the projects that you've got coming up um yeah right now um the company we're all kind of spread out across europe right now everyone's doing their uh, uh solo projects right now in you know okay. theaters in spain and it italy and germany and um and then we're getting back together in February for another Tosca. And what will be new, and then there are more shows to come of Tosca and Traviata after that throughout the entire year. I'm also just, you know, scheduling stuff for the next season right now. That's the administrative part I'm dealing with at the moment. Wow. 
Um, and what will be new in the new season for uh, the Compagnia Nuova is that we are also going to be focusing more on outreach. We have structured our performance. Oh, outreach. So, outreach, yes. Okay. Yeah. To kind of draw in more old, younger audiences, Absolutely. which I think, especially now after the pandemic, is absolutely vital. Mm. But I'm not sure if all the theatres uh, have the right tools to actually be drawing people in. Mm. And um, that's what we're offering and that's what we're starting. So it's not just that we're focused on very acting intense shows that actually make opera more like cinema. So you can actually sit there and watch and listen and understand what's going on without even having to look at, look, look at certain uh, titles or anything. Mm. Um, and at the same time, we'll be doing opera workshops for young people around these shows and even start to like to bring uh, uh, youth choruses into Traviata shows, for instance, mm -hmm. um, in order to have a very lively, interactive relationship between audience and performers and to just, you know, spread the magic of opera. Oh, really. wow. I love that. I love that. That's so amazing. And your painting, do you have any exhibitions coming up? Or? Um, right now, this is uh, an older one behind me, um, but um, right now I'm starting a new series in the other room. <laughs> um, uh, I'm sniffing lots of, you know, uh, um, uh, all the uh, ingredients that... Oh, like, the uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, and... Uh, I'm starting a new series that is also, that's not entirely abstract like this one, but also incorporates more figurative elements for the first time in my life. Wow. Um, and I'm now kind of getting the first prototype ready. And after that, I will be, you know, um, thinking about uh, uh, exhibitions and galleries. Fabulous. So my last question for you, Britta, and then afterwards I will definitely, I'll share um, links down below for your company, for you, your, your um, being Britta, amazing Instagram account and things like this. But how do you balance all of these? I mean, you know, as when I was working as a violinist, um, I had a hard enough time getting that going, but you know, to be a, to all these different elements, how, how any final tips about balancing these different areas? Yeah, I mean, I have a clear, let's call it even hierarchy um, or like priorities. Okay. First and foremost, my focus lies on being a singer and performer. That's what I studied. Um, and that's where my heart, you know, lies really. Yeah. But then, and after that comes producing and painting. Painting in a way you could even say is almost recreational for me. Nice. Um, yeah. But of course, you know, I have a certain, you know, ambition to be doing exhibitions. And also, you know, when I sell a painting, it brings in quite a bit of money. <laughs> so oh, it's worthwhile nice. selling more <laughs> paintings. Yeah. Um, uh, and, um, but I think it's, a, it, like I said at the beginning, it's a learning curve. Mm. For me, it's just like for many years before the pandemic, actually, I didn't have time nor space to paint. But I was constantly kind of, I was missing something. I had to take a long break because I was just so busy with all the singing kind of stuff and constantly and traveling and moving. But it had, when I moved to Berlin, it, one of my goals was to have, to be able to be more, be more versatile again. Mm. And it's literally just, it's about making a, you know, schedule that works on a daily and weekly and monthly basis. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also kind of being forgiving you know, with yourself, if maybe yeah. there's a week okay. where you can't do everything at once, you can't always do everything at once. Yeah. But yeah. there's like, sometimes I need to be at more, you know, doing more admin, uh, administration for the company because it's just the time of the year where bookings come in, like now, for instance. So it just really depends on the necessities. But oh, yes. what I always do is sing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, Thank you so much for talking to me. As, as I say, um, I'll share links down below so people can find out more about you and see what, you, what you're up to. And it's been such a pleasure to talk to you. And um, Likewise. <laughs> so thank you for being here, Britta. Thank you, Jenny. And all the best for you. <laughs>